Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for being here. I, I'm always really, um, I really value that I have this opportunity many years to, to kind of catch you up to date. So, so I really appreciate your time. Thanks for being here. Uh, let me share my screen because as usual, I have too much to say for the time allotted. <laughs> it's a, uh, a hazard of being me, I think. Uh, okay. Uh, all right. So encounter. Uh, I think as many of you know, uh, We've been through a time of transition and encounter. In 2019, CEM and CEM asked us to go to to try and go alone to become self-sufficient, uh, and also made it clear that they would do everything possible to support us. And so we have undergone a lot of structural changes. Like this young person here, we've been drawing up plans and constructing um, structures to help us get where we need to go. And so this has included achieving legal independence. We are a standalone Canadian charity now. Um, and some of you I know even donate every month to us. Thank, thank you very much. Uh, we also constructed a board. Uh, we have uh, five people, three from the community of Christ and two who are outside. We need to have and will add more outside members over time, but we're trying to do it slowly to make sure we add the right people and don't just rush to fill spots. Um, and the key for this really has been Lou. Uh, Lou um, was the first structural change that there was, was to ask Lou to be the chair of the board. And Lou is the one who really got us our standalone charity designation, our legal independence, and has been a, a mentor for me and a guide and um, just invaluable, really. And uh, in addition, also invaluable has been that we have added staff. We have a part-time marketing communications person and a part-time admin person. And they add not only hours to the day, but skill sets. And it really has trans transformed Encounter. And so with this, Encounter is pursuing its vision, which is promote religious literacy uh, and to foster kind of engagement, connection, and encounters that we hope promotes understanding of people across differences, that creates belonging for everyone in this country, and that creates the culture that you need for a pluralistic society. Uh, these things are really important, and I, I want to stress how important they are by sharing with you two kind of data points. One, although Canada is, you know, a great place to live if you're going to live somewhere in the world, and we do a lot to try and foster pluralism, uh, and I want to acknowledge that, but not everything is rosy. And so if you wonder about intolerance in Canada, the marker of it, the data point you can look at is hate crimes, because hate crimes, of course, are the extreme of intolerance. If those are going up, you, I mean, A, that's bad on its own, but you know that other forms of intolerance are probably going up too. And so the data in Canada looks like this up to 2017. You can see for about a decade, it was more or less flat. And then suddenly in 2017, it went up by more than 50%. And these are all hate crimes. But the big driver of that jump was in that one year, religious hate crimes went up by over 80%. It was a stunning increase. Uh, this includes the worst hate crime this year, that year, which was the Quebec City mosque shooting, when six Muslim men were murdered for the crime of being Muslim or the crime of praying. So a uh, terrible year. Now, what happened after that? Was it a blip? Did it go back down? It did not. You can see in the next couple of years, there's a little dip, but it's a much higher plateau than we'd ever had before. And then in 2020, you can see a big jump. And in 2021, another big jump. If you look at the number in 2021 and the number in 2016, five years earlier, if you compare them, you can see it's gone up over 100%. It's a stunning increase. And the big jump in 2021 was again driven by a uh, two-thirds increase in religious hate crimes. And it again includes the worst hate crime of that year, which was uh, the Asfal family, who was murdered in London, run over on a street corner. Uh, unfortunately, amongst G7 nations, there is no country where so many Muslims have been killed in hate crimes as in Canada. These two being prime events, but there's been some others as well. So that's the first data point, right? Is that this, this is obviously not what we want to see in a problem. The second data point is I often say to people, talk to people about how diverse Canada is. We all know it's very diverse, but I have shown this slide many times. I have said relative to the United States, so adjusting for population size, because the country to our South is also very religiously diverse. How many religious minorities, Buddhists, Muslims, Sikhs, Hindus, and Jews do we have relative to the United States. Again, adjust for population, because there's 10 times as many people, but relative to population, do we have more or less than them? And no one I've asked this to has gotten it right. Uh, with Jews, there are more Jews in the States. Even if you adjust down for our population size, we only have about 60% as much. But when it comes to Buddhists, we have proportionally more. How much more? We have 100% more. We have double the number of Buddhists they have in the States. With Hindus, 
we have 150% more, 2.5 times as many. And with Muslims, and I acknowledge this number shocked me, we have four times as many Muslims relative to population size as in the United States. And when it comes to six, uh, there aren't exact numbers, but it appears we have somewhere between 12 to 15 times as many six adjusted for population. In fact, we just have more six. They probably have around half a million in the States. We have about three quarters of a million. In fact, do you know what country in the world has the second highest number of six after India? It's Canada, right? So even compared to the US, we are way more diverse. You can do this with the UK and it's the same story. Individual bars were changed, but overall, even compared to diverse places like the UK and the US, we are way more religiously diverse. And this is becoming the more so all the time. And with that rise in hate crimes, I think this is why encounters work is so important. Okay, and so we're that's uh, that's what we're trying to do. And so we're trying to pursue this in three areas, uh, with individuals and the public, with the education sector, and in the workplace. So let's start with individuals. Uh, we do things like we go to all sorts of groups. Uh, lifelong learning groups bring us in to do individual talks or eight-part series. They're often groups of retirees. Uh, we do stuff with congregations or rotary clubs, just any civic groups that call us. We also um, have a great relationship with Road Scholar, which is the largest educational travel company in the world. Um, we often get good re reviews in our programs, but marketing is a challenge. How do we make ourselves known? Well, they have a data list, you know, an email list that's probably 100,000 people. So the partnership is very good for us. Uh, we do talks with them for them online every second month. I have one on November 14th on the many branches of Christianity. If you wanted to listen to that, you can. It, it does cost, I think, about 20 bucks or something. But we do a talk with them every two months. We have uh, week-long sessions where I do five religions in a week. I do classes in the morning and the afternoon. We interview somebody from the tradition. I do that about three times a year. So again, they help us to reach audiences we wouldn't get. And it's also, it's steady revenues for us and revenues where we don't have to market. We don't have to spend time marketing, which is really good. Um, there was also this year, uh, I feel a bit sheepish about this, but they put me on a cruise ship. Um, it was actually good revenue for Encounter. They paid every single day I was there, but it was also a wonderful um, personal opportunity, but also a wonderful learning opportunity. I'd never been in a Muslim majority country, and it was fascinating to see how different Islam is in Egypt than it is in Malaysia, which is a Muslim majority country. I'd never been in a Buddhist majority country, and it was fascinating to see how Buddhism just like integrates and mingles other religions like it's no big deal. Uh, I've been studying these religions for my whole life, but I learned so much in those few weeks. And lastly, these all of these activities with Road Scholar also help Discovery Week attendance because this year, I think a quarter of our uh, Discovery Week attendees were Road Scholars. So Road Scholar is just a great partnership. And we have online talks sometimes that you can sign up for. Uh, we haven't done this in a while, but I think we're going to do some in January and February. I'm still trying to figure out which ones. We'll definitely cover some East Asian religions like Confucianism and Shinto, which are more than religions. It's really about the whole culture of East Asia, if that interests you. And of course, uh, the JW gift to the world, and that is the Discovery Week, which we continue to run. And if any of you want to come, as always, we'd love to have you. And if you know anyone who want to come, uh, we're open for registrations. We love getting folks there. Okay, second is education. Uh, for 25 years, we've been going to high schools. And this is uh, this past week, I took this group to uh, three places, including this beautiful Orthodox Greek Orthodox Church. Uh, we uh, are working now a lot with post-secondary institutions like the University of Toronto and George Brown. Uh, we even had a university week, a mini discovery week of about four days long that um, students from two American universities came up for. They're going to do it again in two years, and there's now a third university at Colorado that, that might join them. Uh, the education stuff, especially the high schools, is our lowest revenue activity in terms of trying to become self-sufficient, which I hate talking about revenue, but we do have to, you know, become self-sufficient. Uh, but we continue to do it because, you know, we think it has high social value, right? The youth are our future. Um, and so that's the education work we continue to do. And last is the workplace. Uh, in the workplace, we're doing a lot with governments. We do stuff with the federal government. We're doing our uh, first thing with the provincial government, the government of Alberta um, in November, and with municipalities as well. We, do, we work with for-profit industries. There's a high-tech firm I've spoken to three different times, Hyundai twice, a mining company, some others. 
And we do do a lot with nonprofit organizations and civic institutions. We do a lot with police. And this includes this very week, I'm in the midst of our first annual three-day religious literacy training for police. Uh, it's nothing like this has been done in the province before. Uh, this year, there's not a lot of attendees, which we knew because it's a new program, but we're hoping they'll go back and say it was great and that over time it will build. And then we're hoping over time to be able to do it out West as well, because this stuff is critical, I think, for police. Uh, we're doing stuff with the universities, not just with the students I just mentioned, but also like equity and inclusion for training for university staff. And we do stuff with organ donor organizations. I spent five days in Oklahoma this year, and there's two American organizations that are talking with us for next year. And all of this, I think, is um, the thing about the workplace. Uh, let me back up. The workplace stuff is really important for impact, right? Because workplaces set norms. How we're taught to act at work helps set sort of social norms. So I think it's really important for our vision. It is also key to our self-sufficiency goals because they, they pay more and they can help us to achieve uh, the self-sufficiency we need. So what is our progress? Encounters Reach today is really larger than it's ever been. Uh, we are now, in a way we weren't before, doing stuff with government, doing stuff not only with schools, but with police forces, um, not only in universities, but with healthcare and with individuals. So that that's really, really um, pleasing for us. We're very grateful about that. Our progress towards self-sufficiency has also been coming along. We're not where we need to be, but revenues last year were, were about two thirds higher than the prior year. And we will uh, break that again this year. So that's good. Uh, we do have various barriers as well. Uh, the first barrier is always marketing. How do we let people know we exist? Because it's, it's hard to get known in the big bag world out there. Our programs tend to be well received, but it's a matter of people knowing about us and thinking that we're worth giving a chance to. Uh, the other barrier, of course, is financial resources. We wish we could hire more marketing help and stuff like that but hopefully that will get better over time. And the third barrier is my time. Uh, last week I was out three full days. This week I'm out three full days. And because I'm always the means of producing the revenue, then there's less of my time to market and let people know about us. So it's a kind of barrier. I, I can't be out five days a week. And so uh, we have a plan to try and um, deal with this. We have several plans, but the most important is this one. And that is we would like to create videos. We have found uh, that a lot of organizations are moving to online on-demand learning. So that means that their staff can just click on a learning module that's video when, they're, when it suits them on their lunch hour or whenever. And they want it to be short. You can have 30 minutes of training, but you break it up in short little five minute segments. And so we have an idea of how to do like a 30 minute session on Islam in a bunch of five minute segments, how to like make a welcoming workplace for Muslims, how to do the same thing for Jews and Hindus. So this would be a workplace project and also useful for government and police and stuff like that. We've identified a talented videographer who's familiar with us and our content, and we've done market research and people have said, yeah, we'd be very interested. The big issue is we don't quite have the funds right now to do it. Um, we have some of the funding, but we're working on that. Let me end with two things. What's for you? Uh, if you want, we have upcoming talks. We have that Road Scholar talk in November. There is a series coming up in January and February. It'll probably be like four Wednesday nights or something. There is a Discovery Week, of course, if you've not come or you want to come again. Uh, and we have our newsletter. If you, if you want, you can sign up for the newsletter at worldreligions.ca. Uh, I do all sorts of things. I just did a two-part series on Pentecostalism that I was really pleased about, about this fastest growing religion on earth and its political impact. And if you sign up for the newsletter, it will tell you about upcoming talks that are that are coming up. It's an easy way. The newsletter is only twice a week. It won't fill your inbox and you can unsign anytime. And finally, if you'd like to help us, uh, donations are welcome. We are, in a, we are a charity. Many uh, We have a lot of folks who've signed up for monthly donations. If you want to, that would be great. And for your congregation, there is the mission initiative, of course, of pursuing peace on earth. And if you're wondering what your, organize, your congregation can do on that front, we do have some congregations who've decided that one way they want to pursue that is that they budget $1,000 a year for encounter. We are small, so small, like every amount of money, um, and not that a thousand small, but every amount of money really helps. And the last thing is the videos. We are looking for investors who might be able to contribute like $5,000. And to that end, if your congregation is interested in maybe considering doing that, uh, 
reach out to me or reach out to Lou. Lou, Lou knows everything I do. Uh, either one of us would be happy to chat to you about it. Uh, and we, as we say, we really hope if we can get those videos made, it will allow passive income. That is, money can be made without me spending a day somewhere. And we feel like that is the path to, to self-sufficiency and keeping a counter around, you know, for the next 20 years. Okay, folks, thank you very, very much. Really appreciate all of your support and your time. Take care.